This is Weaving the World Ops call on Wednesday, November 24th, 2021, the day before Thanksgiving. Um, my and I like, I like your advice to not do the call on Thanksgiving. I haven't heard anybody call up, but I also don't know who's watching Town Square. So Stacy, on the Town Square matter most, I said, how about this year? Last year, I felt like we really needed to get together on Thanksgiving. This year, I feel like we really need sort of time to go take a walk and see family and whatever else. So I think I'm, I think I'm going to pass on tomorrow's call. Sorry, back to you. Um, so, uh, Jerry, you were, you were wondering, um, well, how to get out of, you know, what, what advice we might give to help you get out of your own way with, uh, weaving the world, I think, and, and you've got a good sense of, you know, some of the next things, um, finding a podcasting host, um, maybe it's, um, anchor, maybe it's, maybe it's not, maybe it's blueberry, maybe it's not, um, just, and then just doing some production. I, I have a, an oddball suggestion, um, uh, which is related to suggestions I've made before uh, for you. <laughs> and maybe it'll, maybe it'll resonate, maybe it won't. But I think if I were you, I would hire a taskmaster. I would hire somebody who would, was doing the project management of it. Um, even they, they wouldn't necessarily even need have to have to be like, sometimes you want, you, you really want a good project manager. In this case, I think just being able to externalize and then reflect with another person, you know, what, what should we do next? Um, it's a, it's a hard thing to do that all in, in one head. It, it just, so you is. mean, so you mean project management, not production help. This is separate. different. Yeah. 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 And I think, I, I think, um, you know, if I were in the, in charge of the budget, it, it seems like an overhead overheady kind of thing to, to do. No, um, I totally, I mean, I have a wee budget, but I do have budget to spend on that. I mean, I was just thinking with what money and then I'm like, oh, right. I, I could use the, the rep, rep family. I think rep. it's a really good demonstration. And if, if I were a funding partner or if I were a participant and, you know, the, and we, we ran through the, the course of the current funding, um, I think I would be really happy with one of the outputs actually top line one of the out outputs is how we did it you know what worked what didn't mm -hmm. um so that for that you don't need project management but um but i think that is actually an output that you should you should um aim for you know uh, uh, actually maybe a mini episode even a behind the scenes episode or a, a wrap episode or something like that you know okay we're at, at the end of season one here's what we learned uh here's what went really well here's what we do again and here's what didn't work um, you know, join us for next season. Um, uh, makes me want to do a podcast. Um, uh, so then the other thing, I guess, in that retro, in the, you know, in the, in the rap party, in the rap, um, uh, review, um, I, I think it would be really useful. I, you know, thinking through what that was, you know, it's like, and we hired a project manager part-time, you know, we didn't, we didn't budget a lot for this. We didn't, you know, we, we, we bought a few hours from somebody, we didn't buy all the things that we wanted from a project manager, but it, it really helped drive the project forward. It helped, helped us keep on track. It helps, um, you know, Jerry, the, the, the lead be able to reflect with another person, you know, what was going on, what, um, what to do next, especially. Um, and like I said before, it's, it's, it's really hard to do that kind of project management uh, in your own head without, you know, without somebody who's a little bit less involved um, in the meat of the, the, the subject, um, being able to, to look at, at, you know, you in the meat, any person in the meat of the subject and say, you know, here's where we should go next. Here's what we should do yeah. from, from arm's length um i think it'd be really valuable and and that's what i would pick next what that's what you should do i think so question um so the the, the person i imagine is creating a, an organized list of what has to be done next and using some kind of tool uh to present it and the tool question is a separate question here but it's interesting too um, my problem is when I'm confronted with a long list of things that doesn't necessarily fix things for me, the kind of project manager I could use is one who'd love to pair a program on some of these things yeah. or, or one for whom some of the tasks are go invite two people to pair program with you on this, 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 and this. So yeah, that somebody it, shows up to do it with me. 
uh, the interface to the project management infrastructure shouldn't, I mean, it should be what serves you best and what drives you best. It, it shouldn't be, you know, oh, hey, I made a long list of crap. Here, I'll come back in a couple of weeks and see how you did on it. No. Right. So I'm trying to figure um, out how to get to the one that's going to work. It's you. a lot more. And, and uh, the tool the tool question is really interesting. And, and you know me, I would love to come back to that. Um, for, for, for this project, what I would want to see is somebody who has a set of tools or processes that they use already. Um, I don't care actually if it's digital or wetware or paper or whatever. I really don't care. Right. But they should be able to manage. You know, I have a list of hundred things, um, and Jerry, uh, here's you know here's the next one, and the one after that. By the way, that don't think about it. Here's here's the one that you have to do today, and. Right. Another one is going to be, you know, another two or three, I, whatever. I think that's probably you can handle more bandwidth than that. But they should, they should, part. I, for me, a project manager is project management is more about um, facilitating the project getting done. Right. Um, it's not making a list of things. Um, right. A list of things is involved, and a good project manager will have a list, and they'll probably have a list of lists that they have, and nobody wants to deal with that. That's why they're the project manager. That's their bailiwick to manage. Uh, Stacy, you were going to jump in a moment ago. Yeah, it's it's just slightly different. It's just an idea. Like you just named a few questions that you had, and I was just wondering, like if you had a schedule. And like at nine o'clock, the question is, you know, which I forgot which is it, which hosting thing would I use? And you invited people just for that conversation, you know, in that group that wanted to share. And then at 10 o'clock, you like if you had a whole schedule of events that people knew about and they could stop in for the question they wanted to weigh in on. I don't, you know, only this is a very different kind of thing. So only because the whole thing is about engagement, I just wonder if that would be helpful at all. Um, I'm imagining different ways in which this could be instantiated, uh, one of which wouldn't probably work for me, given who I am, which is that there's a list on a calendar on a schedule that's that that's only for me that only I see because I, I have this very weird trait where I show up for other calls, anything that involves another human. I'm on the call. I have no problem. I show I, I love it. I'm, I'm and I'm mentally completely in. Any event I put on my schedule that's just an, on a date for me to go sit down and do something, I have the worst trouble sticking my, my butt in my seat and keeping it there. Like the worst trouble. I don't, right. hold, I don't hold appointments with myself well at all. So, so, what so if I was faced with a long list of what to do at 9, 10, 11 o'clock and it was just me, probably not going to get done that way. But I can see a different way where... Uh, either the list is made public, which is like sort of public blackmail, which is interesting, but not great. Like it doesn't make me feel good, but I get that the pressure would be different or it's something else in, in a different, I can see it instantiated maybe in a different way, which, which could work. I just obviously, or I would have solved it and I'd be like, my, my life would be humming. I haven't hit that system yet and adopted it to know that like, like that, that when, when it, when it's shaped like this, I starts humming and I start just like being in the flow. Cause what I, the, the, the problem I'm having is transitioning into the flow. When I'm in flow, I do stuff really quickly. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm efficient when I'm, when I'm uh, focused, right? right? Right. I'm talking about having one set block of time, hours, hours, but you have that schedule, which is public, have at least one designated person sitting with you, but other people still invited to come in for that question. So, so we're going to be talking about this at nine, at this at 10. And at the end of that, those little blocks of time, you answer the question. It's like, okay, so we're going to do this. Check it off. Go to the next block of time, which you've already said is going to be the next question. So am I, am I paraphrasing it badly by calling it pair programming hours with tasks assigned to each of the segments? It, each doesn't have no, to be. No, it sounds perfect. It sounds like you're, sounds like you're it's, phrasing it perfectly. It's... Hey, Mark. So, Good morning. I, I, I really morning. like that, Stacey. Um, uh, <laughs> and and I feel like from experience, I there, I um, there are some problems. So one problem I think is um, I I think we don't have budget to pair pair somebody to make sure they have time in in chair with with Jerry. 
I think um, this would be like an open list of, for all OGMers and anybody well, and then, would drop in and we don't know that anybody Yeah, and drop then in. office hour drop in stuff. Um, and, and actually I can speak from experience with Wiki Wednesday, right? Um, uh, uh, just because you advertise, you know, availability of, of something doesn't mean that you're going to get any participation. And mm -hmm. it doesn't actually mean that you're going to get focused participation. Um, so I can kind of imagine a tweak on that where it's, we're going, you know, here's, here's a block of time, let's get together and make progress on this sub project, you know. Um, but I, I still worry that having having people drop in and drop out is is probably not a good type team dynamic. Um, and then unless you bring people up to speed a lot. Yeah, unless you have have a dedicated person you know, um, a, a dedicated pair person. Um, we could mint, uh, we could start a DAO and mint the coin and offer people an ROI, basically a, uh, what's the word? With, with I, profits, Stacey. An IOU, yeah, profits. But I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, put it this way, the people that show up to the OGM calls, they're not coming for money. They actually enjoy being there. And there are people that care about, I, I don't even remember the different anchor or blueberry. There are people that want to be able to just say, oh, I like this because. So if they know beforehand that that's the question being answered, they might stop in. The same way you stop on somebody's Facebook post and put your opinion, I'm thinking with that kind of motivation. And if it's, if it's people we know, and they might just come because they want to help you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and also, uh, Pete, we table the conversation that we've had, tried to have a couple of times about having IOUs of some sort for people who've put a lot of effort into OGM. Um, I, my last conversation with John Borthwick, we only had a half hour, but I said, hey, John, like if I wanted to go set up a DAO or something like that for uh, OGM, what, what would we do? And he proed his brow and it, 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 it didn't turn into, okay, call this person, do this thing, do that thing. So it was not it was not a simple thing, but but if we had a fictitious, if we had a cryptocurrency, uh, we could we could in fact reward people with something uh, for participating in these kinds of things. Um, uh, hey, Mark. Hey, Michael. Uh, we're we're trying to figure out how to how to find a project management model that will work with me, which I hope is not an oxymoron. Uh, or an impossibility, like I hope it's not like an impossibility theorem of some sort that I've just uttered. Uh, but, but we're sort it's, of finding really straightforward. I we're think. finding our way toward it. Yeah. And 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 one of the one of the the cool things about you, Jerry, is that you actually work really hard and really fast when you're on task, um, more more so than most. Um, so uh, so what do we think about the idea of hiring a project manager? person so i think i think what you said earlier about finding someone who's got a methodology and a tool and a, and a process i think that's right on and i think what i need to do is shop for the process and the person i think i need to figure out whom to ask but i need to just sort of knock on some doors and book a couple calls where i'm like okay exactly like what do you walk me through what tool you use how you, you know screen share me through um a, a couple a couple incidents or setups or something like that you no know? Um, you shouldn't care what tool they use. I kind of do because it, the, the tools seem to matter to me. And I'm also, and let me open the tools Pandora box for just a second, because we've, we've brushed that a couple of times during our, our, our time in OGM. Um, I'm, 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 there's a little budget and I'm interested in six months worth of Mondays or something like that. The, 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 of all the project management tools I've ever gotten to use, the one that I was like, ooh, this shiny object is really sweet and, and, and luscious was Mondays. I liked it more than Trello, more than Asana, uh, more than the couple others I've sort of tasted. <clears throat> and I'd be, I'd be happy to find a human who is like a black belt in Mondays and has their own process and then pay for, start paying you know, uh, for, yeah. for, for Mondays for six months and see how that goes. And if it goes great, then that becomes the PM tool and, and off to the races. But uh, but I don't know, right? I, I, I feel like it's a failure mode if you're doing, if, if the, the tool is interesting to you. <laughs> really? Oh, for yeah. me, for me, it's like, I, I, for me, the tool matters a bunch because if I am not well, looking forward to opening Trello on my, on my desktop or even flipping yeah, through it and seeing so what the next task is, I, I think of that not as we're the off tool, the rails right? right there. 
the the interface to the tasks and the interface to the work should yeah. be amazing for you but i i have a hard time thinking that mondays would be better than um having the project management person say hey um i i'll, I'll start the call with you today and, and i've also scheduled a pair for you today um let's get going right where i don't where i don't where i don't see the tool you mean where it's more transparent well, to me or invisible to me it it, it, it if not if if it needs to be in a tool interface then and you know mondays is the most beautiful thing you can imagine um which i have a really hard time to believe by the way really um because i haven't, I haven't it, seen it, it in like the a most, year and a half no it may be the most beautiful project management tool um but a project management tool, I think, is is like weak sauce compared to the most beautiful thing you can imagine. You know, the, the most beautiful thing I can imagine for you is um, uh, Pablo Picasso sweeping in and going, okay, let's get to work, you know? And then the next day it's uh, Richard Feynman and the next day Stephen it's- Stephen Hawking pulls up in his turbo wheelchair. Yeah, so, you know, so that's that's the the bar to reach and then you know mondays or trello or you know it's like i mean just because those are things that people use to get stuff done doesn't mean that that's the best you know the best and highest interface to getting things done so if if it yeah. were the case that mondays yeah. or trello hmm. or airtable or you know whatever asana um were the interface that you wanted what i would want to see is a project ma person project management person going okay it turns out i use excel and a bunch of legal pads but you know gall darn it if you know if mondays like gets you excited to wake up in the morning and it's like okay i'm going to knock out my monday stuff uh he or she would be you know sticking a bunch of stuff in mondays based on a much larger set of their tool and process. And then, you know, here, here's your, your stuff for this week or this month on Mondays. I think they could probably do a better job than Mondays of, or Asana or whatever, of setting you up for success, setting you up to be excited, setting you up to, and it's probably a lot more like today's, you know, um, hey, Jerry, uh, you know, good morning. Uh, uh, today you've got, you know, uh, X at 10 a.m. and uh, Y at 1, 1 p.m. and Z at 2 p.m. Um, she's, you know, she's X, you know, she's blah, 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 um, and wants to talk with you about this. You know, this person is going to help you do these things and, and Z is going to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So however that interface works, I, it, you know, but it doesn't need to be the, the tool that the project management person is using. So I think in thinking about this, I'm assuming that I can't pay for somebody to be as involved as you just described, because, because in, in the scenario you described, which does sound juicy and delicious for me, um, there is somebody who is actually involved in my daily life all the time and saying, hey, here's the next thing, hey, here's the next thing, and they're doing jujitsu right ahead of me, like a fantastic assistant would do or a great ops person would do, and I can't afford that. So the reason- I, mean, I don't think that's true. The I, reason I'm relying on those the don't tools, follow. really okay. So I'd love to figure out how to afford that, but but the reason I'm relying on the tools is my assumption that a whole bunch of this is going to have to be me and anyone else who feels like helping and who 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 can come in and actually do some 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 work on it, um, using the tools as backdrop for what's next. How does this fit? Where does this go? The the get yourself out of your own way is where we started this question, and I think if you're doing any kind of project management stuff or trying to figure out what to do next or you know watching the tool going okay these are the the six you know the six things in the asana task list or whatever i think that's a sub optimization it you know it's it's like we've we've taken our specialist um jerry you're a specialist and you do what you do really really well and we've assigned them to the project management tasks it's like why would you do that? You know, and, and that's the definition of, of being in your own way for me is having you do pretty much any project management stuff. You know, not that you can be wonderful at it, but it's like, you know, it's like taking a turbo race car and slowing it down to not even first gear. It's like we're getting out and walking and pushing the thing. I need Guido. 
from uh, cars. Yeah, yeah. That would be a good one. I need Guido. I, th I thought you meant uh, Guido von Rossum from Python. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no. That would work too. Yeah, that, that might work too. And God knows Python's become a huge thing. Uh, anyway, uh, Michael, Mark, Stacey, other thoughts? I was just going to throw in about, about the seductive, you know, uh, Monday's interface that, um, you know, it, it, is, it is the prettiest of, of those things that I've seen, you know, I, it, it, and you sort of, there, there's this feeling like you want it to like, that harnessing that desire to want it to succeed because it's pretty and, and satisfying when you click on things and move them and it is, is, is sort of a boost, but it's, it's a little bit of a sugar rush. Um, and, you know, I've worked with Mondays and, and Trello and Jira and, you know, all the, all these different things and, you know, Todoist and just like various combinations of various things and paper folders and GTD and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't think that the tool really makes that much difference. Um, honestly, it's, it's, it's like they're, they're the, the I, I, and I'm specifically referring to Mondays as like, I thought Mondays because it felt good and looked good would supercharge the same stuff that I'd been doing in the Asana suite. And uh, it didn't, it didn't really. Um, that's, that's great, um, yeah. great evidence. I appreciate that. That's, and, and when, I, when I said that it was the, the best looking sort of, I kind of meant I would be really happy to turn to it often in the day <clears throat> and see what's next. And I could see myself updating it a whole bunch of times in the day, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. Where, where if we hacked one out of Airtable, I think it would be interesting, but I would then have to become an Airtable black belt to use it kind of. So, so I think that Monday kind of Air, takes that away. Airtable has, um, has a whole new thing called interfaces. Uh, so if you get an Airtable person to set it, set it up, um, right. You can have beautiful Airtable now and not have to deal with the Airtable interface. Interesting. Um, I, and some of the best, well, when I've seen project management done really well, it's with mm -hmm. Excel, actually. Um, Excel is probably the, the power tool I've seen used best. And it's not, it's like, like Michael says, it's not really the tool. It's the yeah. practices and the artistry and the genius of being able to keep up a bunch of stuff and make them all happen. And you know, with with tools that help you. So I think Jerry, the the yeah. the thing that I would I would ask you to do is instead of going, I need to find the best tool so that I can do the project management. I think you should really split into. I'm a podcast host. I'm a connector. I'm a maven. I'm a information specialist. I'm a magician. And project management is something that I need to hire for. So it gets done well, it gets done cheaply, um, uh, maybe economically is a better way to say that. Um, and, and it just works. So taking that apart, this is, um, if, if I think of effective people, you know, in the tech world is the, the folks I kind of know, the people I look up to. It's the ones who figured out early on Here's, um, here's how I am turbocharged. Here is how I got a lot of work done, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's doing what they do really well and outsourcing the other stuff to other people, right? Yep. And yep. it's when they find an effective outsource that they, you know, can ramp up to double up. or triple or 10x what they used to be able to do, right? Yeah, yeah. So what, what you should do is look for a 10x improvement in throughput of podcasting, which means that you need to take yourself out of the project management loop and do the podcasting and then hire in for the, the support of project management. Stacy. I was just going to ask, is it possible that maybe Jerry needs an assistant more than he needs a project manager? Same, same thing. To me, they're not. To me, they're not the same thing at all. Because to me, an assistant means that he's directing. So in essence, he's still a project manager, but he's not doing, you know, it's like 
here, take dictation, that whole thing, you know, it's, um, it's, it's to, different to, to me. To, to me, project management is, um, it, it's not the boss, project managers is not the boss. Uh, project management is a facilitation where the project manager is the boss of their domain, but their domain is making sure that the team gets the work done. So, so my question is what, like when I think of project manager, I think of a higher level of expertise than I think of with assistant. I, you, you must have seen assistants in your life who are kick-ass and worth their like weight. Like I'm a in. great assistant. Like for example, I'll give you an example. I am a great assistant. Would I call myself a project manager? No. I mean, if I'm planning a bar mitzvah, maybe, but not if I'm, you know, uh, in your role as an assistant, you're doing project management, some of the time at least. Some of the other times you might be a therapist. Some of the times you might be, you know, uh, right. okay. uh, Got it. appointment maven or something like that. Okay. So, and to Jerry's point about, oh my God, Pete, you just, just described something wonderful and it sounds damned expensive and there's no way I can afford that. A first place to look is a virtual assistant. So the kind of stuff that I, 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 you know, somewhere between um, booking Einstein for the, today um, out of the grave and and self serve Mondays, somewhere in that continuum is some some reality. But a, a good chunk of it is a virtual assistant. This is what a virtual assistant does, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, they they say, okay, tell me all the crap that you've got. You know, let's 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 rant for 20 minutes on on the 10 things that you think you have and by the time we're done i'll have a list of 100 things i'm going to keep them in my my tools i'm not going to tell you what my tools are because you don't care and you don't need to care and then every morning i'm going to you know drop in for for 10 minutes tell you what's up uh check in with you at the end of the day and so it's you know like a like like a four hour a week virtual assistant is is probably a huge step up from where you are right now a huge step up hmm. Hmm. and then if we could hire that person out of the universe of of ogm or something we could maybe pay or otherwise compensate right stacy mm -hmm. um uh, a, a person and get even more value add out of that right um, because they know you or they know the space or you know they're 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 doing double the work because half the time they're connecting with you know amazing people that they've always wanted to connect to and then they can chit chat with you know um whoever i don't know jerry oh, correct, correct me if i'm wrong but i think just from what i observe that there's a piece of you that really likes that personal connection you know um so sure. i would yeah so I think it's important to have somebody there just to say, all right, did you do this? Or, oh, we have this person has to be contact or whatever it is, just to have that personal connection. I mean, I know from the one call we did together um, where you wrote the letter. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. And also I'll point out that Michael very kindly gave uh, Phil Kennedy some time to spend with me. And we had some standing calls for a while and he was, he was, trying to do that sort of, but we didn't really spec it down this way and we didn't focus this way, but it was very much like what's next? How do you know, how do we make this happen kind of kind of thing? Um, and, and we wrapped that up a couple a couple of months ago. Um, um, right around the time when Phil moved to London. Um, so I think I think sort of chemistry and connection or whatever matters a bunch here, but the process and and standing up uh, what Pete, what you were describing sounded pretty reasonable just from my personal personality perspective. Um, the, the way I see it going is, I so so the cool thing is you've made one big first hurdle, right? You've got budget, you could actually hire somebody. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Um, if I were, my, my path forward or, or what I can kind of see roadmap wise is, um, uh, I hire a virtual assistant who's somewhere between three and four hours a week or something for three weeks or four weeks. I, I, first couple of weeks are going to be tough. So four to six weeks actually would be better. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I, Jerry, learn how to let go a little bit of 
of worrying about project management and let let somebody let a professional do that let them hold the space for deciding what to do making sure it gets done things like that um, not deciding what to do in the whole universe of things but deciding what's the next most important thing that we've agreed upon is my list of important things to do so learn a little bit how to delegate um, getting shit done um, you know uh, over three, four, five, six weeks. Um, uh, then maybe move on to the next phase of that, you know, get another tranche of funding, uh, be able to, to pay for eight hours a week of, of a virtual assistant, find somebody even more aligned with me. Maybe the first virtual assistant was fine, but kind of, uh, you know, we didn't click. Uh, the next one, I know what to look for. I, I know to I know how to lean into being able to, to rely on somebody else to externalize that part of my brain um, and get somebody better, you know, and basically work your way up. Um, like like anything, you're not going to be perfect right out of the gate. You have to, to learn and unlearn things. Um, you have to share a brain with somebody and, and that's never fun. But, you know, over the course of six months, a year, two years, five years, whatever it takes, I, you know, I, I am imagining a journey in the future, a couple years hence, going, I've got this kick-ass assistant or assistant team or whatever. I get a lot of shit done. I get much more done than I did, you know, back in, in the olden days in 2020, 2021. Um, so, incrementally getting you know into a much better place where you're more effective you get a lot more done um, it's more fun you worry less you're making money more <laughs> mm -hmm. things like that all those things would be great um and there's two things that i think this person needs to be good at one of them is decomposing large amorphous projects into tasks into doable tasks so the chunking the chunking of activities and the second one is the clever the tom sawyer outsourcing and uh, rethinking of how the tasks actually get done, right? So one task I have in front of me is we have no graphics really for, for weaving the world or the big fungus or anything like that. I have like, uh, and, and, I, and I keep thinking like, do I go to Canva and sit down and mess with it myself? And I've got one, I made, I made a tile for the audio podcast that's ugly as sin, but it's a, it's a decent starting point and it's the right size for what a podcast needs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, but someone smarter than me would be like, well, okay, if we frame it this way and do it this way, you could get like five options to choose from and maybe that would work. But then that means sort of like running and managing a tiny little contest or something or, 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 or and that gets complicated uh, for, for really that, fast. I, I think that's spending $200 on graphic design on, on, on a web dribble? bureau. On Dribble or something? Yeah. On, Just, I, I don't know about Dribble, but you know, there's whatever a place the, where you can What's the modern Dribble? It, it shouldn't be a contest. It should just be, you know. Hire somebody who's, who's, art, work. who's, who's art we like. Yeah. And, you know, and then again, with the incremental thing, right? It's not going to be perfect the first time. You know? Right. You budget some money for it, 150 bucks, 200 bucks, to get you a lot of graphic design that, you know, that is fine. And you should go with that, right? <laughs> Michael's like, oh, I don't know about the fine, but... Uh... You're muted. You're muted. I'm sure. I'm sure there's something serviceable there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but big big uh, big ups to it not being a contest, which is a kind of which is sort of like that asking, model. asking for free labor because of the getting free labor part, or because of the it just doesn't yeah. It's just a, it's just a bad. It's a bad. You know, that vibe. it's like, you know, yeah. And I mean, it, it somehow took a little bit of hold in design, but imagine if, you know, there were like newspapers who said, we want a story on this subject. We're throwing it out there for everybody to write and we'll pick the best one and the rest of you won't be. Wait, 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 that's how you're just describing how the web works. Well, it's how the web works, but it's not how, like, it's not how a business. It's, uh, it's. It's Good point. A, a level below gig economy. Yeah. And yeah, gig yeah. economy is not. And gig economy not being, the, being the precariat itself. But it's, it's worse than gig economy in that it's sort of like, I need a ride. I'm 
throwing it out there and whoever gets to me first gets the gig and the person who drives the same amount gets your second gets nothing hey and, that that's uh that's how my old boss esther used to work because <laughs> everybody knew that her time was scarce and it was like and everybody knew she didn't drive so she always needed rides to and from airports so it'd be like that's when you pitched your product Ah, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, her, so one of her assistants main jobs was to find a pool every morning at six or whatever time she swims like in whatever city in whatever city she was in in pre-web pre-everything sort of day so this is this is actually a hard task sometimes involved paying off a russian guard so that you could sneak into the pool before hours etc cetera, etc cetera. and then the other task was filling all these little interstices uh with with appointments and like oh she needs a, a ride from you know whatever are you up for that and they'd be like yes very funny and then all of which showed up in xyrite in her schedule uh in an, in an ancient antique word processor dos word processor and we could go sort of go look at like if you could piece together the abbreviations it was like uh, are you guys familiar with german crossword puzzles german crossword puzzles are really cool I used to do them with my grandfather the clues are in the squares there's no separate table. There's no number with a cross-index cross-referencing to a list of clues. The clues are abbreviated. Now, German is not known as a concise language, but you would be shocked at how much you can say in a square in, in, in German. Like it's it's really weird. And, and there's lots of abbreviations for things, right? So uh, it was really cool. Anyway. Have you done a search to look to see if any of those, you know, if there are any graphics out there that kind of match what you want already? Yes, I've, I've, could... gone, I've gone looking for a bunch of stuff and I got a couple trails of something that's interesting, um, but nothing, nothing really huge. And, and also there's a young woman who works at Ziba who uh, has a master's in textile arts. Uh, and I, some of the, I took, she, bought, she bought in some of her work and I took a couple of photos of some of her textiles, which is what I've put on weaving uh, the world right now. So if you go to weavingtheworld.org, you'll find a, a shot of one of her, uh, yeah, Kreuzwort great stuff, exactly. I had never heard of a Schweden so that but it makes sense. Um, so so I, I could ask her if she would weave something or start something, because kind of the, the image that makes sense it just makes so much it's too much sense that maybe it's not compelling it is like a, a woven artistic woven globe uh out of a mix of materials and a close-up a close-up of it some different angles whatever but a, a not finished a not finished globe um uh, out of textile art would be absolutely perfect um so there's all that possibility but i haven't gone and said hey could we do this or or you know, could I commission you to 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 make a piece or, or whatever that you know? Don't have that much budget. I've got a tea, wee tiny little piece of budget. Um, so that sounds like a good virtual assistant task. Spend thirty minutes finding, um, you know, sourcing some textile arts person in. Well, but Nigeria. I've got it. But I have a textile arts person. So you're saying someone cheaper or someone like? Well, are, are they available and? Um, Melina could do this in her spare time. Yeah, I think I think she'd be available. I think if I said, "Hey, um, could you could you spend some time on this on weekends, or whatever?" I think she'd like to do it because she's trying to figure out what the hell to do with her fine arts degree because <laughs> she's had to set it aside, right? Um, if you paid her fifty bucks, would would that make it turn from a part time or a spare time thing to a so possibly fifty bucks plus materials or something? Yeah. I can ask. Um, okay, so so my operational. Oh, oh, they, and then it, it's funny. Uh, right in my head, it was like, oh, and she'll get exposure. And then I'm like, this is another no no. You know, this is don't <laughs> don't hire artists right. for the exposure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, you could be on this panel, and there'll be great people in the audience. Okay. Um, so my next task, given that we were coming up on the top of the hour, is to shop for a virtual assistant. Uh, I, I think that's I think that's a virtuous path. Um, and God knows I want to tread the path of virtue. Uh, I um, I feel um, I'm I'm a little concerned that I I well that we we took all that time coming to that 
um, as a next virtuous task rather than just parting part, part and parceling out your your stuff into Google Sheets or whatever. Um, yeah, except this is a it, meta task that should facilitate the whole thing, right? I, I, I think I think it's a good approach. I think and and especially coming back to the way you stated it, you know, how do I get it out of my own way? It's like hire a professional to do the the part that you could certainly do, um, but it would be a complete suboptimization. So just for grins, here's what I've got uh, for virtual assistants. Uh, and most of these are tech virtual assistants of different kinds. And then here I've got, so I've, I've got two different thoughts. I've got one for cyber assistance, which is like intelligence on, you know, on call, like x.ai, I think is a reasonable one. And I don't know which other ones of these are. I haven't looked at this thought in forever, but then I've got a separate thought for virtual personal assistants who are actually real humans. And there's a couple of businesses that do that, including one that's uh, one block away. Uh, I don't remember their name right now, but it's a it's a Portland-based company called Shoot. I think they'd be right here. Um, anyway, uh, so you know, and I don't think I want to go to an agency like Fancy Hands or Balance Works. Oh, I've got Fancy Hands in twice. Got to fix that. Um, uh, why? Why not? Um, should I knock on the door of the corner here? Or Magic? Or here's here's a list of. Yeah, thanks. Time, doctor. Ah, Mark found a textiles and apparel in the global economy, which is a woven globe of rope by Kitty Dickerson. Thanks. Um, Top 25 virtual assistant websites for um, VA services I, in 2021. A, a better approach is to network for this a little bit. Um, Jerry, you've got at least a couple lists where you could say, hi, I'm in the market for a virtual assistant. Help me, you know, yep. run the... They have to be a little careful with how you say it. Um, yeah. Uh, because you don't want it to sound like they're doing podcast production. But, you know, I, I've got a, a, you know, a, a small project called Weaving the World, and I need to hire not a production assistant, but a somebody help me to make sure this stuff gets done. You know, right. do you have a, a good line? I think in your network, you should be able to, I, I would, I, it's hard for me to imagine that you wouldn't get somebody who says, you know, um, oh, I've got a person, they've got, you know, 10 hours free a week or five hours free a week or whatever. Yeah, I kind of also want to find out what's really worked for anybody. Like, who who's got one they love? I think that's a, a good question. Um, and um, yes. Can you uh, can you record enough of that to make it part of an episode? Enough of the process of finding someone. Yeah. Um, is, is so is setting up the infrastructure for weaving the world um, a possible behind the scenes? Um, episode of Weaving the World? Um, possible, but I don't know that it's compelling in the sense of, of like, like the material we're looking for, but it's entirely possible. I mean, th this is a generic problem I think most everybody has. So it's like, hey, it's, let's put It behind. sounds like one of the more compelling things I can imagine Weaving the World doing. Really? Maybe, oh. maybe I'm, I, you know, Six Sigma or something like that, but it's like you too could run a podcast um, on a shoestring and you know have a full production staff and blah blah blah. Number one, let's find a virtual assistant. You know, okay. I would eat that up. <laughs> this may be in the episode. That's great. Um, cool. Uh, I would also like to reschedule with you to go over Krav and synchronize all that kind of stuff because we missed our, our call time yesterday. That would be great. Um, um, can we do a little bit of show and tell as a as a yes person? you were going to start with that sorry no i wasn't going to start with that i wanted to do the other thing first but okay good um it's not very much fun um productive but not very much fun uh let me share my uh um dang it i have it half set up to like i i'm going to blow the reveal just by sharing where it is right now shoot but it's okay. Um, what should we ignore to not 
right. have the punchline blown. It's you'll see it right away. Okay. I guess you know I, I started a uh, what I did was starting started a script a screencast of what I learned. Um, so one of the things uh, I wanted to show and tell was uh, so let's well so. This one's a little bit hard to show, so let me show this one first. Uh, here's a page on Tor, Tor, um, and it has these subheadings, spelling, story, etymology, and sources. And so here's a little mind map of this page. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this one, you'll notice, doesn't have any links out. Uh, so if I made, well, actually, I don't know. Well, it has a link, a link to the Wikipedia page at the bottom, right? So it has one. Yeah, so it doesn't have any any wiki links. Uh, so let me. You mean interim? Um, yeah. Uh, so you can see that the mind map changes. Is live? Yeah. Ah, and now it adds a link to the map of links. Yeah, it didn't do what I thought. I, I'm still not very good with the mind map thing. Um, and so the, the so the, the tile on the lower right is backlinks, right? The tile at the lower right is backlinks. And so let me undo this. Yeah. Let me close this real quick. Um, this is the way most people see Obsidian. So this is a standard feature here. Um, uh, there's a couple of things in here that I wanted to show and tell. Um, uh, so we can do that maybe. Uh, you can see that tour is linked from Indra's net. This um, is also very topical because Christmas season is starting and we have Donner is Donner and Blitzen. <laughs> um, Which yeah. in case you don't have that woven into the web there, you might want to do next, but still. Uh, here you go. Uh, so it would be easy for me to highlight that. Bingo. Um, uh, so, the other thing to notice here is I, I found a new thing in Obsidian. Uh, this is this is a, a link from Ingesnet. There's a link to Tour um, from the rough transcript. Uh, this could be a link, but it's not. This could be a link, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually just click this purple button here, and magically it's linked it, and then it moved really? it up to up here. It makes it pretty, and that's a feature so, baked into the default view. Yeah. So, well, that's um, cool. so I can go to a random topic here. You'll see that I have topics, right? Yeah. The, the organization of this is that that call had books, organizations like um, uh, Club de Paris, right. and Motor, um, had books, organizations, persons, resources, and topics. So uh, if I click on Kinefin, um, uh, it once once you get enough topics going, then you can come back and find all the places that you don't have linked and link them automatically like that. So um, this is parsing text for links it knows it has in this particular vault. All yeah, all it's doing is matching. So if <laughs> all it's doing is it's doing a word search for the title. Mm -hmm. I guess that's actually for existing titles of pages. Yeah. So if if I go to the choosing topics thing, mm -hmm. there's you know. This, this is a decent page name, but um, obviously it's not something that, that came up in the transcript. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if I went to free hugs, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, uh, here's two uh, in the rough transcript, and here's another one in the page that I created, stories and the news stories. So then this one, free hugs carried really, really well, comes from this part of the transcript. You know, I, I already curated what's the, this. what's the difference between those two? The one's rough and the one is it's cleaned this up? Is, uh, this is a page that I've curated. Oh, okay. um, so I'll click on that one. So a big part of that call was uh, about the new story, right? So then um, the the... Um, the conceit for for this whole wiki was take stuff that people said and curate it into pages. Yep. Um, so this is some of those pages had obvious like eight flux superpowers is um, 
or, or great man theory. It's a, a well-known topic. Mm -hmm. Some of them are topics that came up and are new. So there's an interesting actually conundrum here. The, the you know, Kinefin or great man theory is something lots of people already know about. Um, but for our signal purposes, it's actually more important to know about the things that we came up with on this call that, that most people don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the new story, you know, is, well, anyway, I, I, I can't explain what I wanted to say there, but maybe you kind of get it and we'll get it. But, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering that the news, that the new story isn't a topic that bubbled out of this particular crowding. Um, I, well, it, it arguably kind of is, I, and I, it could be argued that I did a poor job on this title. Okay. Um, so this is, this is the page for the new story. It's just that it's called stories, comma, and the new story. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, so the primacy of money is another, another curated subject that I came mm -hmm. up with. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So this is what somebody said. Um, what is the story that's in place that is so pervasive that people can't talk outside of it? Um, and I, I didn't do much annotation of who said that, but Grace said this. Mm -hmm. So she didn't say this part, but what I did was try to, um, because I could have linked story here, but it doesn't really capture the fact that she's talking about stories and the new story. Um, so I guess to do this right, uh, to, to name this well or something like that, there would be more, more explanation of stories in the new story and more kind of stitching together. And a, a different way of implementing this not as good would be to just have hashtags. So it could be hashtag the new story, which would be at the end of the paragraph where Grace mentions what is the new story, for example. Yeah, um, hashtags, I, and I've tried that experiment with, um, you know, this. these are hashtags here. Yeah. Um, uh, Obsidian actually does hashtags pretty well. So uh, I think if I click on that, it, it does a tag search. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think, I didn't do ma many of these. Uh, hashtags end up being more like a index. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I should be able to turn on a pane here with hashtags, but I guess I don't have that plugin set up. Huh. Um, I, it, it turns out uh, it's more effective usually to use links. Um, so, so a way to fix this conundrum here, mm -hmm. the, the story thing is, um, Uh, I'm probably going to delete this, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so anyway, I could say something about, um, I would probably do it differently than this, but I could even say keywords, all keywords, uh, story. story. It, it turns out that hashtags are interesting. Um, I think they're going to be useful for indexes. Um, they're mm -hmm. not particularly interest, interesting for connectivity. So mm -hmm. already, um, if I just make a page called story, um, so and then uh, story probably should be a phrase or something. It's not a topic. It's, it's more of a maybe I Maybe it's, it's a, a glossary concept. Word. It's a concept. Yeah, concept is good. Yeah. Um, uh, so story got created in the root, but I'll move it to concept. Um, and then uh, back where we started, it uh, Obsidian up, updated that link. Right. 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 Um, but if I go to the page called story, then this unlinked mention things uh, works perfectly again. Because so, now there's a page and it's busy looking thing. So right. that becomes a new search term for all the all the pages in this vault. Right. And I could I could waltz through here pretty quickly and just linkify the, you know, uh, like this is a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that makes me think that this is another crazy story. Yeah. Um, and then we can see if there's any any other mentions of that and there aren't. 
which is okay. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for that little tour on the questions. Um, uh, what it was, the, the show and tell thing I wanted to show off was, uh, it's called uh, local, uh, local graph. Mm -hmm. If I go over to hotkeys and search for local graph, um, I've already got a hotkey on it, but there's a, a function in Obsidian called graph view open local graph and going to make a hotkey for it. I'm going to pick command eight um, because above the eight is a star and that makes me think of a graph and nobody uses command eight anyway yeah so then um i can open that pane and uh, right now it's a separate pane like one of one of these uh page panes and so you had two different graph views when you started this. One was a, a view of links embedded in the pages, and the other one was of subheads and heads and, and sections yep. of the document. Yep. Um, um, the, the other one is called a mind map. And, and it's not it's not quite it's not quite perfect yet. It needs some some more work. Uh, this local graph is um, a built-in feature and it works pretty well. Uh, there's a there's an overall graph, um, which I can go to. This is all the pages. In this um, vault. In this vault. Uh, I can drop things out, like uh, there's there's too many things linked to people to make it interesting. So I like to do a thing where I, I drop that out. And whoever's not familiar with Obsidian, vault is kind of the local database size. It calls, calls them vaults. Same, same thing with a uh, rough transcript. Um, so now it's starting to get a little bit more interesting. And let me turn that off. Um, another cool thing that you can do with uh, the graph visualizer is um, an animation of how the, the whole thing grew. So it should be relatively straightforward to write a plugin exactly like this one. Is this one open source? Uh, the graph visualizer is just a built-in part of uh, Obsidian. And Obsidian is there open is, source, so the answer there, is yes. No, right? Obsidian is not open source. Oh, I thought it was. Um, there is uh, there is another graph visualizer which is not as polished uh, called Juggle. Um, uh -huh. and I'm pretty sure that's open source. So this is me putting this this uh, workspace together, um, and you can see things grow. You know, it's it's interesting. I don't know if it's super useful. Yeah. Um, but I'm asking that because it should be relatively simple, less so now that these pieces aren't exactly open source, but relatively simple to write a brain-like viewer through a, a space. And then if we were to absorb my exported brain into a, an obsidian space, uh, into OGM Wiki or whatever, then one of the viewers could in fact give me brain navigational possibilities. Yep. Um... Uh, it's well put, yes, and uh, uh, the garden crew actually has a project very much along those lines. Um, uh, I'm going to turn off this pane. I, I, I guess maybe I shouldn't do that yet. Uh, we saw it come, it pops up like this, and then Obsidian lets you drag these panes around and right. arrange them how you want. So this is actually a pretty good layout. So now this is now I've got backlinks and I've got a cool uh, local graph thing. Um, uh, and they're not taking up too much space. So the local graph thing is, so so back to demoing the local graph. Um, on each page uh, you navigate to, uh, you can see uh, what it links out to. Um, and you can also see these are dark um, because there's actually content there, and news story is a page I just created, and there's it's lighter because there's no content there. Cool, that's nice. Um, so uh, I can navigate here. Um, I thought that one would be more interesting, but I guess it's not. Um, uh, so I can navigate just by clicking on things here, or uh, or you know, of course, I can be using this page instead. Mm -hmm. um, oops. To do just this. And then 
Um, Quick machine, Pete. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? There <laughs> uh, is referring to the fact that this is my new M1 with lots of memory. Uh, you can see up here uh, eight CPUs or something like that. A few of them are engaged, and also my memory is not full. Uh, a scary thing, though, you can see that. Um, we're not seeing your toolbar. I think you're sharing only the obsidian. Oh, video. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, let me <clears throat> let me share the whole thing real quick. Thanks for telling me. Mm -hmm. uh, up here, I've got there we go. a CPU meter. Most of the oh. CPUs are idle. Um, I'm using half the memory. This wow. is a 64 gig machine. Jesus. And there's 28 gigs active. So Seriously. wired is the stuff that it really needs. So it's only got, you know, three gigs that are Does really it tell you which apps are Yeah, eating? Google Chrome's Chrome? got five gigs. All right. Docker's only three right now, which is pretty amazing. Obsidian's yeah. got two gigs. So you can see pretty quickly an eight gig machine. I beat Sav. Wow. So, and, so Obsidian's using considerable memory. The two gig is a lot of memory. I've got a number for, for of documents. It's uh, it's the, <laughs> the the beauty and the terror that is Electron. Um, uh, each of these windows is a separate Chrome browser, basically Chromium browser. Oh. Uh, so I've I, especially on my old machine, I I definitely noticed that I didn't want to have too many Obsidian windows open. Right, because it's a memory hub. If hard. I was doing other stuff, I would close, start to close Obsidian. Fascinating. Okay, uh, Mr. Kranza had his hand up for a while. Mr. Kranza. Um, hi, great, great presentation, Pete. Um, I'm wondering, um, this uh, pane on the upper right, can that yes. be embedded into a page? So that when no. you go, no, no, it, it definitely has to be. At this point, this is an Obsidian plugin that I think runs in Obsidian only. Is that what you're saying, Pete? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which so means, not, it, which means it's not externally easy. embeddable. <clears throat> It's, it's obviously kind of a, you know, it's a fairly generic piece of web engineering to do a first directed graph and, you know, mapping links and stuff like that. Um, um, I, I, again, uh, David Boval and the garden crew, <clears throat> um, we're designing something like this that can be embedded on a, on a web page. Um, and the idea is to um, make it so that it, it works natively in massive wiki and tiddly wiki and fed wiki. Mm. <clears throat> um, and then on a website like um, uh, the static site generator massive wiki builder. So the, the idea of that is to kind of recall this, um, but make it a little bit more static and also let you export SVG from it. Um, and especially the thing that gets David excited about that is that when you export the SVG, um, uh, you can give it to uh, a designer person and um, uh, uh, then they can make it look pretty as opposed to algorithmically generated. So, mm -hmm. you know, there might be, take, take this for instance, this is all the people in this thing. Um, some of these people, Doug Engelbart and I don't know, Jack Welch and uh, Chicksent Mahali, you know, you might color those people differently for some reason or make them bigger or smaller. Because they're dead? Um, well, because they're dead or because they're important or because they're, you know, <clears throat> or, or you might have a view where you, you counterpoint Jack Walsh and, and Bucky Fuller or something. Mm -hmm. you know? Those um, do seem to be two extremes of some axis. So, so then uh, the code name for that project is called Brainlet, um, named kind of after Jerry's use of the brain. And then this, this particular plugin uh, is uh, um, equitable um, uh, in its deployment of, of links. Uh, but um, to, to make this more like a Jerry's thing, uh, we could type these, these edges, the lines. Um, so some of them could be children, and some of them could be parents. And then we would start to get pretty quickly towards um, a, a brain view of, of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get to demo another thing that's cool. Um, keep, 
you know, it's funny when you're doing these by yourself, I guess, I remember the times when I, I clicked a page that worked really well and then you click another page and it's like, not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the law of demos. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if I put a, um, if, another cool thing is that uh, if I put a link in here, uh, Let me make a totally different one. Um, How about technical debt? <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, what Please. I was trying to do is remember an important sign <coughs> of industry. Um, so the uh, this is dynamic too as I as I you know add stuff here this keeps populating which is cool the, the one of the main things I guess uh, Jerry if you if you were to use some of this for um, a, a podcast episode this uh, this like this thing of obsidian where it find it does a word search on the page title and mm -hmm. then lets you link it just by clicking a button mm -hmm. um, uh, is pretty brilliant. <laughs> um, and, and then combined with, you know, once you get kind of a critical mass of, of subjects and stuff like that, um, all of a sudden you can, you could import another transcript into here, for instance, and link it up very quickly, right? Because and then every time you yeah. make a link, it's, it's a virtuous circle because every link informs more links. And, right. You know, so your rough transcript would be Tagged up with suggested links right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you would want to do some some smart uh, smart. Thanks for the idea of concept. Um, uh huh. Uh, and if yeah, you do smart naming of pages and stuff. Then you can you know and, find and if stuff. and if your rough transcript was really rough and hadn't trans translated a couple things properly, the moment you corrected them, they would turn into clickable links. Yeah. Or, yeah, that's true. Clickable true. incipient links. Um, <clears throat> wow. The place where we should linkify story threading, for instance. Yeah. Story threading, no space. Uh, fair enough. And uh, camel case, if you if you get there. Thanks. I was hoping there would be more on the transcript, but I guess. Not. Yeah. Cool. cool. Now it's in, now it's reified. Um, so Quick thank question. you. If yes, I, if I may, um, I, Peter, I didn't quite understand the difference between concept and topic. What what you hope to differentiate there and kind of make what's yep. the improvement in um, I guess the cognitive ergonomics of um, and kind of memorability of um, a group kind of practice? Uh, great question, Mark, as always. Thank you. Sure. Um, uh, there's there's a, a bit of um, initial conditions that forced topic to be the thing that is here um, in that this whole wiki was meant to be the, the, the transcript or the, you know, the collection, the, the reific reification, the, the um, crav, craving of just one qualification. Um, so the idea was, you know, what, who are the people we talked about on the call? Um, who are the, you know, what, what books do we mention on the call? And then what topics do we so, you know, so this was call was about as we may think and as we will think and the apes flux superpowers and climate and, um, heroes and stories. So, a, a cool thing to do would would have been to um, the, the the process of this creating this set of things was me going over the, the transcript and the chat uh, and picking out the things that I remember that we talked about and highlighting them and turning them into sometimes into um, uh, well known uh, phrases. Um, and then a well-known phrase you can Wikipedia is pretty well, pretty quickly too. There's a plugin for this. Um, 
and some of them were things a little bit more or in just net is another good one mm -hmm. um some of the things were me um uh, curating together right the primacy of money is is something i'm i'm really proud of coming up with that term to capture you know a thing that we were talking about but this term didn't get used at all um uh and and this was this for me was and you know maybe somebody would have picked a slightly different topic or a way to encaps encapsulate this but and, and the concept of share shareholder primacy is is like a wikipedia thing like like that's that's a common yeah that's a common term um so let's do real quick uh I think I have this on hockey, but I forget what it is. So I'm just going to do it this way. <laughs> the, the law of demos again. Shoulders, mm -hmm. um, well, no, not worth it. Um, so, so topics are topics are bigger than concepts in this um, in this schema. Um, so a, a topic is something like Facebook's metaverse or uh, intertwinkleness, interdisciplinarity, and polycentricity. The one you just created, shareholder primacy, that, if I understand correctly, wasn't in the call, but it certainly links to um, your topic, the primacy of money as a possible topic. Or I'm say, um, yes, as a possible concept. I'm sorry. So we just... Yeah, you know, push that in there, shareholder. Yeah, primacy. I so um, I I have to say, shareholder primacy is in in Wikipedia too. So mm -hmm. maybe did I? It's a, it? That's a common term. You know, I wonder if uh, let me check the hotkeys. Um, it may be just that I called it wrong. Huh. Uh, I can share the link to shareholder primacy in the yeah in the chat. Yeah, I've got it on a separate window. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, good good observation, um, Mark. Uh, another thing that I, I kind of ended up with this. Um, I the all of all the playing that we're doing with it today. I think I'm going to revert. Um, sadly, um, although okay. the share, shareholder primacy is is really interesting. Um, I really meant this to be about one call, and even in the one call, um, I had a lot of trouble, especially with people. Um, some of these people were mentioned on the calls or were participants in the calls. Some of them are like the co-author of um, uh, somebody. Yeah, some of the pieces that are authors of the books mentioned. And, like, and it, it, didn't, it didn't seem, um, uh, it didn't seem right to leave them out. So, but then, so so topics are kind of like bigger things to me, and then concepts are, are are more generic things. Topics are something I guess you would find in as a Wikipedia article, probably, um, and also things that that we in you know that we came up with, um, or that we referred to. Positive cartography, for instance, is probably not in Wikipedia, but it's a good topic. And then concepts uh, in this schema doesn't have to work out this way uh, forever but concepts would be something that you would find in wiktionary uh, instead uh, where i you know we wanted to be able to say um there's a thing called you know actually this for me stories and the new story that's a topic for me um different than stories and different than the new story the, the idea that the new story is embedded in a, a context space called stories. It's, I think, important. Um, but then, then we needed a smaller, you know, wiktionary word um, to start to link uh, to do the the backlink things. So we're kind of feeling the effects of a tiny trap here of using as high level identifiers abstract things like concepts, ideas, topics, phrases, idioms, whatever, and then. Also, because Obsidian kind of likes this outline view <clears throat> and you're using it heavily, you're, you're not using this as a wiki namespace where it's just flat and everything is, happens to be a page in the namespace. You're actually using the directory as, as an important organizational structure. 
that gets really funky because then when you have a person who is alive and in this group, is that a subcategory of persons as opposed to a dead person who happened to write a book or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So, so it, gets, it gets tangly really fast because you and I might disagree on, you know, new story might, one of us might say, ooh, that's a concept. One of us might say, no, that's a topic. And then we're kind of a little bit screwed um, because we, we've suddenly like, uh, we've suddenly created a problem where there didn't need to be a problem because we're using these large, large scale headings. Yeah, in, in other work uh, in the massive wiki space, um, we, um, OGM wiki actually suffers from this pretty, pretty heavily. Um, it's, it's got even more fine grained, uh, high, Hierarchy, folder folder hierarchy stuff. basically yeah directory um, hierarchy. Uh, over in the massive wiki space i've i've kind of want i've i've wanted to say hey this whole organizational hierarchy thing is just a distraction please don't cool. do it um for for this for crabbing something if that's a verb kind of it's um, becoming one it's uh i think it's a really useful thing um and and i think it's the the thing that you you mentioned that something is, you know, both a topic and a concept, right. or a topic and a book. Um, I don't, I don't see a big problem with that because it's a. You basically add add a, a disambiguation link, you know, to right. both of them or on top of them. So, which brings me to my second thing before passing to you, Stacy, um, which is when your when the space in question is tiny, like a, a ninety minute call and you're craving sort of that, then the list of people involved in that is manageable. The second you sort of bump up to the broader scheme of everything we care about, uh, and let's say we had accumulated a hundred calls in this space, click down hierarchy menus are completely worthless because you don't get beyond A and B on anything. Uh, and suddenly the space is dry. Like well, the one reason I don't like outliners very much at all is that as they collect up information, they just get worthless. You you start to accrue information, and the backlink view is just like overwhelming and gigantic, right? The, the categorization I've used here, I think, is useful. And and if you um, I, if you, I'm just trying to explore what happens when this, which which looks nice well, and tastes good at small scale, uh, goes bigger. This some some of this breaks uh, a lot of it breaks and then you yeah. figure out how to fix it um for, for what it's worth i tried this in the background it turned out this when i had a capital p here that was what broke it so the wikipedia oh, plugin oh. needs needs help um huh. so let me do it do it live again yeah. so i can just hit a hot key and it fills in um uh fills in from wikipedia uh i this this is very few things here um, and they're they're not um, organizational. They're not um, they're not. This isn't Dewey Decimal. None of these are are like big subject areas, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, subject areas is kind of a landmine. Um, once you start doing Library of Congress headings, you know, right, right. All you're doing is library science. Um, uh, I think um, I. I I like this. They're they're types. They're not subject areas. So a type of a thing, you know, um, <clears throat> a book called debt is different than a concept called debt. And yes. I wouldn't have a problem making a concept debt here. And then oh, say, you know, uh, the the book called debt. There's another weird thing. Um, but in this case, um, the system would not help you disambiguate between instances of people talking about the concept versus the book, and you'd have to be really careful tagging up. To go to one or the other, mm, I, mm, I, I, Obsidian, for what it's worth, is very flexible and it doesn't really care. It, you know, no, but, but it doesn't it. care. But you'd need to make sure you don't link back inappropriately to the to yeah. one or the other. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, uh, flex is another one. I I did a a, a a a plus thing or and a minus thing when I made the book titles. It was like uh, the whatever is before the colon or the dash uh, is the title. And then this is sub subtitle. Right. Um, uh, that's half the time it, it worked because I think there are some of these that have really, uh, you know, open innovation, researching a new paradigm is a bad title. Open innovation is a good title. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, being able to say that some of these weird, you know, I, I'm not sure that I would recognize that as a person, but when the system knows that it's a person, there's value mm -hmm. add to me. Not mm -hmm. not because uh, yep. Nanaka is 
well, Nanaka is just not familiar to me, is the name. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of the same thing with with topics, topics versus, you know, books, I think is a good. So I, I, I'm not told, I'm, I'm cautious about the hierarchy thing, but if you keep it to types and you keep a very small number of them, um, I think it's, I think it's potentially useful. Uh, with, with some caveats and yeah. pitfalls. Uh, Stacy, sorry for the long wait. No, that's okay. I think it sort of ties it. I was just going to say, is there a way to differentiate whether it's by color or something else, the speakers that are in the container at the time, as opposed to the ones that are being referred to? And then if it's somebody that falls into both categories, like maybe somebody there that's mentioning their book, then it would be, you know, like it would have like an extra ring about it, you know, around it or something. I don't know. I'm just, you know, it makes um, a difference to know, like, I don't want to think that I was in the room with Frederick Douglass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would I, love to be in a room with Frederick Douglass. That would be a dream come true. Um, I've got, uh, <laughs> um, oh, I, I happen to be awesome. distantly related to uh, the, the KKK, you know, the highest KKK person in Oregon in, in the 30s oh, or whatever. Oh, um, he only came to mind because it, it was a conversation about things that Trump didn't know yesterday. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Already, but, I I have... Uh, did he think Frederick Douglass was like a third baseman or something? <laughs> oh, he thought he was still oh, doing wow. great work. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Oh, I love This that. was a while back. Yeah, it was a while back. So already I do differentiate, there, I, and I can make this into a separate page right now. Mm -hmm. It's not. Um, if I made this into a separate page of people who were there versus mm -hmm. people... Uh, people in general, right? I, I could differentiate it, um, yep. yeah, yeah. even even with colors and things like that. Yep. Um, um, we've gone ninety minutes, um, but it's been really fun. So th thanks for y'all's forbearance and yeah, and, and thank, interest. Thank you for the for the great demo. That's really cool, and it's reminding me of Obsidian and its magic superpowers. Um. Yes. Thank you. Um. Quick question: Is there a uh, Thanksgiving morning? Um, Oh, I, I'm going to send a general note to the Google group that says we're going to pass on uh, on a call tomorrow morning. Super. Uh, let people let people have family time and go back to stuff. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, happy yeah Thanksgiving. exactly. Exactly. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, may all your gratitudes come true. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, we're going to spend a bunch of time being grateful for stuff. All, all your gratitudes by nature are true. I think. It's true. You make them true by being gratitude. Grateful. I mean, if you're grateful for something that happened, then there it is. It's real. I suppose you could be grateful for things that didn't happen. Now, is that a concept, that be... or is that, a, or is that a concept, or is that a wish, or is that an appreciation? Mm -hmm. Well, it happens to be a book. I'm working. Excellent, excellent, um, and and yeah, and so Pete. Uh, Everything you just showed us, marry that to externalizing my my digestive system, and that's an interesting conversation right there. So, yeah. one more thing: Would you want to put in any of the uh, mattermost channels that you're looking for this virtual assistant, just to yes. get it out there? I, I shall do that. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody. Good to see y'all. Yeah, Good same here. Break.